Hello, good afternoon. I'm a little bit late coming in to do the verse of the day, but nonetheless, here we are. So the verse of the day is Proverbs 2130. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Amen to that. It's very self-explanatory. So in this verse of the day, I want to show some one example, one event that happened in the Bible that, that really shows this off. And I want to show how it can apply to us. So if you turn to Psalms 2, chapter 2, it says, Why did the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs, and the Lord scoffs at them. And it's not funny when he's laughing at scoffing, not when the Lord is. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree, he said to me. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the earth, ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And of course, you're talking about the Lord Jesus, Yeshua. He's the king. This is another example how the Old Testament speaks and foresees Yeshua coming. So, yeah, the, the Lord will break their plans. He will destroy their plans. In the book of Samuel, there was there's a very interesting event that occurred in Samuel. Now, this is an example of how things may seem like they're not going our way, that we're losing in defeat, but it's all for the Lord's plan. Just watch what happens in Samuel chapter 4. So now the Israelites, they went to go fight against the Philistines. The Israelites, they camped at Ebenezer and the Philistines at Aphek. The Philistines deployed their forces to meet Israel, and the, as the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. So Israel was, was not doing well at all. When the soldiers returned to camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord bring defeat on us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant for Silo from Shiloh, so that he may go with us and serve us from the hand of our enemies and save us from the hand of our enemies. Now, if you know anything about the Ark of the Covenant, it is a, it represents the Lord's presence. In the Battle of Jericho, they took the Ark around the walls of Jericho six times before they blew the trumpet and the walls came down. The Ark has supernatural powers that the Lord really used to signify his presence. It is a chest about yay big, and it has some cherubs on, on the top of it. And inside the ark contains the Ten Commandments and I believe Aaron's staff. So they were taking this ark to go fight the Philistines since they just they just got whooped. Four thousand of them died. So the people sent men to Shiloh, and they brought back the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim. And Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came into the camp, all Israel shouted, raised such a great shout that the ground shook. Hearing the uproar the Philistines has, What's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learned that the ark of the Lord had came into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. A God has come into the camp, they said. Oh no, nothing like this has happened before. We're doomed. 
Who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? They are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues in the wilderness. Be strong, Philistines, be men, or you will be subject to the Hebrews that they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought and the Israelites were defeated and every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was very great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. Whew, that's a lot. So the ark of God was captured and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Now this sounds like, wow, whoa, they can't come back out of this, right? They just lost... 4,000 men in the first battle, they got the ark, they lost 30 more thousand in the second battle with the ark, and the ark got stolen. It looks like there's no way that the plans of the enemies of God are winning. That's what it looks like, that the plans of the enemies of God are winning. Now, not everything is as it seems, because in, in Samuel 5, after the Philistines have captured the ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. They then carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. Now Dagon, he he looked like a mermaid. He was a, pretty much a mermaid man that they, they worshipped at that time. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon, falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. So the statue fell right on his face. All right. But the following morning... When they rose, there was Dagon, falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. This time, his head his head and his hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. That is why, to this day, neither the priest of Dagon nor any others who entered Dagon's temple at Ashdod step on the threshold. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and inflicted them with tumors. So look, they got the they got the ark, they got the Lord's presence with them, and now they're starting to feel it. The enemies of the Lord are starting to feel it. They thought it was going to be be easy. They got one of the biggest things that the, the Israelites have been using to prosper and to defeat their enemies. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, "The ark of the." God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon, our God. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, Have the ark of God of Israel moved to Gath. <laughs> so they moved the ark of the God of Israel. After they had taken it away, the hand of the Lord was against the city, creating a very great panic. And he struck the people of the city from the young to the old so that tumors broke out on them. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And as the ark of God came to Ekron, the Ekronites cried out saying, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. Therefore they sent word and gathered all the governors of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place so that it will not kill us and our people. For there was a deadly panic throughout the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the people who did not die were struck with tumors and outcry of the city went up to heaven. So now another city is being plagued with the presence of the Lord. Another enemy of Israel is being plagued with the presence of the Lord since they stole something that was not theirs. Now Samuel chapter 6, when the ark of the Lord had been in Philistine territory seven months, the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners and said, what shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, if you return the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it back to him without a gift. By all means, send a guilt offering to him. Then you will be healed and you will know why his hand has not been lifted from you. The Philistines asked, what guilt offering shall we send? They replied, five gold tumors and five gold rats according to the number of the Philistine rulers. They always think gold satisfies everything. Let's just send them some, send God some gold tumors and gold rats since he's plagued us with them. He doesn't, no. Because the same plague has struck both of you and your rulers. Make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying the country and give glory to Israel's God. 
Perhaps he will lift his hand from you and your gods in your land. Why do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh did? When Israel got dealt heart, harshly with them, did they not send the Israelites out so they could go on their way? All right. So I think you get it, though. In this. In this. Event. It showed that. Israelites thought they were absolutely losing the battle. They they had been defeated. They took away the thing that that they used the most, the presence of the Lord, the, the, the symbol that represents the presence of the Lord. And when it went into enemy territory, the plans of the enemy could not prevail against the Lord. The Lord wrecked their place. OK. This really also reminds me of Psalms 23, verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy ride and thy staff, they comfort me. Normally, this is all that's focused on with Psalms 23, but, but continue. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thy anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The Lord prepares a table in the presence of his enemies, of our enemies. Sometimes the Lord takes you through. Picture this. You're going through this dark, dark valley. It's completely scary. It's the valley of the shadow of death. And in the middle of this valley is this table in the presence of your enemies. You go ahead. You sit down. You have a seat. Drink some water. Get comfortable. Because the Lord is going to do a great thing with you. If you right now are in a situation where you feel like everybody is against you. Well, maybe. Since you, if you represent the Lord, if you symbolize the Lord's commands by following them and you represent the Lord's presence, maybe you're about to do a really great work for him. Keep that in mind. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou preparest a table in the midst of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with, up, with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You're protected. So again, the verse of the day is... Can I get to it? There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for taking care of us, Father. Thank you for letting us be in your will and be in your plan, Father. Keep us day by day and let us not fret when things don't seem to go our way. When it seems like someone has taken us and put us in a dark place or that your presence has left. We do not know what is going on behind the scenes. The Israelites did not know what was happening with the ark as it was in Philistine's hands. But you knew, Lord. And you keep your promises. So thank you. Thank you for your son. We ask that you strengthen us as we go through and that may many be saved and come to know you and be within your plan. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.